Mr. Reglin, thank you very much for speaking to ERT. I will start asking you about the Eurozone economy. How concerned are you about the downward revision to growth of the Eurozone economy? I know that almost everyone rejects recession, but clouds are getting bigger and bigger over the Europe, Europe and not only Europe. Yeah, no, that's already an important point. It's not about Europe, but also in Europe, it's clear that the growth rates are coming down. And to a large extent, that's not new. That's not unexpected at all. Already 2018 growth was less for the euro area, for example, than in 2017. Um, we are in a normalization phase because the growth rates in particular in 2017, but also in 2018, were substantially above the potential growth rate or the trend growth rate. And we know that this cannot continue for very long. What the economists call the output gap has been closed, and that means growth has to come down to the potential growth rate, which is probably somewhere around one and a half, one and a quarter percent for the euro area. So there's a normalization. Then unfortunately, on top of that, there are risks, and everybody knows about the risks. There's a Brexit. We don't know exactly how it will play out. There's a trade tension between um, the U.S. and China, but which could spill over to, to Europe. There is a slowdown in growth also in, in China. So there are these external factors. And also when I talk to market participants, which is part of my job at the ESM, um, I did that a lot last week, this view that it's a normalization with lower growth rates but um, we are not moving to a recession. This view is widely shared. Some analysts estimate that we need another crisis in order to accelerate decisions, such as banking union, deposit guarantees. You? Well, we all work very hard to avoid another crisis. Um, I mean, in the abstract, it is true that decisions can happen faster in a crisis. We saw that um, um, six, seven, eight years ago, also when the ESM was created. Um, but during normal times, and we are all very happy to be out of the crisis, um, it takes a bit longer because 19 countries, 19 sovereign countries, um, the members of the euro area, they are sovereign. Um, they have shared some sovereignty by pooling decisions on monetary policy, exchange rate policies, by being subject to commonly agreed rules on the fiscal side, but they are still independent. Um, and when there is a new problem that requires new decisions, um, that's not easy, because in 19 countries there has to be a debate um, in the parliament, in the media, the broad public, and then this has to be brought together. It's unavoidable that this takes time. In a crisis, when everybody is under pressure and knows that um, one has to do it quickly in order for the crisis not to become worse, then this process can be faster, which is good. Um, but one shouldn't be overly optimistic that during normal times it can be much faster. It takes time, but I think we have demonstrated we are still able to take decisions, like the summit in December decided on additional steps to deepen monetary union to make our monetary union more robust. Let's come to Greece. Are you satisfied by the country's post-program performance? I think Greece continues to make progress. Um, there was a, an agreement in August, and it was also linked to the debt decisions of the Eurogroup in June last year, that even after the end of the program, Greece would um, continue um, certain reforms that are already agreed and also stick to previous reforms. And this includes, for example, the primary surplus of 3.5% of GDP, which is agreed until 2022. And I see no indication that um, the government would walk away from that. It's, um, <coughs> the government does not question that target, which is really a, a core element of, it was a core element of the program and also of the post-program period. Um, there are many other um, elements um, here, and the enhanced surveillance report that was discussed in the Eurogroup earlier this week 
um, shows that there's progress in many areas, but not in all. That's why the Eurogroup decided to, to wait a little bit um, so that um, uh, more progress can be made, and this is particularly related to the protection of primary residences, okay. which is a complex legal um, um, framework that needs to be agreed. And um, the institutions want to see the details of this legal agreement, and then it has to go through Parliament. So this was one of the main issues. But in general, particularly we from the ESM, because we are the largest creditor of Greece, and we feel that we have a special relationship with Greece. We see ourselves as a long-term partner, um, because our loans will be in Greece on average for 40 years, and it's a lot of money, 200 billion euro, 55% of all Greek public debt. Therefore, we have a responsibility as creditor, because we want to be repaid over time, not immediately. Yeah. We are very patient. But it's therefore in our interest that Greece does everything possible to enhance the growth potential, the growth prospects. And this is totally aligned with the interest of the Greek people, I think, because um, they also want to see more growth, because that leads to higher standards of living and more employment. Do you think time is enough until the 5th of April in order to solve all the things that Greece has to do? It should be enough, yeah. If, um, of course, everybody has to work now um, on these remaining details, but I think it should be possible. Some say that it's very difficult to solve the problems of the banking sector or to implement reforms ahead of elections, that they are coming up national and European in Greece. What are, you, what are you afraid of most? Well, I think banking problems are indeed the biggest issue in Greece today. Um, although also here it remains true that progress has been made. Um, for instance, the capital ratios of the Greek banks are high, even above the European average. But the non-performing loans um, are at 46% of total assets, the highest in Europe. Even there is progress. They have come down by about 20 billion euros the last two years. So good progress. But um, it shows that the level is still very, very high. And that's, again, not good for growth in Greece because with such high NPLs, it's very difficult for banks to provide loans for the economy. And without additional credit, new loans, it will be more difficult for the economy to grow. So um, again, this is an issue um, that is in the interest of the Greek people and the ESM and all the other institutions that needs to be tackled. There's progress, but it needs to continue. Um, and um, therefore, this is something we follow very closely. And I think that particular issue has not so much to do with the elections. It needs to be, um, we need to find solutions and as a minimum to continue the progress we have seen in the last two years. Does Greece remain a special case? Yes, in a certain sense, yes, because um, Greece received more financial support than any other country in the Euro area the last um, nine years. Um, from the EFSF, ESM side, as you know, we provided loans to five countries, um, but the amounts are much, much smaller than the other four countries, Portugal, Spain, Ireland and Cyprus. So Greece by far the biggest amount because the problems were the biggest and it took also eight years to go through these programs. And Greece, unlike the other four countries, received a um, substantial amount of debt relief. There was no private sector involvement with haircuts in the other countries. There was um, um, some maturity extension, but not up to 40 years like in in the case of Greece, no interest deferral like in the case of Greece, um, no um, profits from previous central bank interventions. So Greece got a lot more support through loans and through debt relief. That's not comparable to what happened in the other countries. And therefore, I think it's understandable that not only the institutions, but the taxpayer in all the other countries has an interest in what is happening in Greece now and in the next few years. And something last, uh, how long do we need to wait for a good uh, 
great for Greece? Well, again, there has been progress. Um, until recently, there have been upgrades, um, yes. but Greece is still two or three notches away from the investment grade. If the reforms continue, if the government sticks to the commitments given um, to the Eurogroup, to the European partners um, last year, um, I'm sure the series of upgrades will continue. I cannot say when <laughs> the threshold to the investment grade will be crossed, but um, this is only a question of time. If the reforms continue, there will be the upgrade. And I think the bond issue last year, last week, okay. shows that the markets already have a positive view. They would be even more encouraged with future upgrades, but that completely depends on the reform continuation.